this is Dan Anderson. I write the In the Shop column for Farm Journal magazine. I do a In the Shop blog, Farm Journal's website, and I do kind of specialize in doing technical and equipment related stories for the magazine. They asked me to kind of give an overview or make a few guesses about what might be coming in the future of 2012 as far as farm equipment and machinery. I think we got a glimpse of what's coming in the future when last fall Kinsey Manufacturing released their robotic driving system. The idea being that there doesn't have to be a, tra a driver in the cab, the tractors will drive themselves. Um, all the manufacturers probably have something in the works. Kinsey probably beat everybody to the field with it. But three farmers had three reactions to it when they heard about it. One was why? Because driving tractors is the fun part of farming. But once they thought about it, I think a lot of farmers saw the advantage of less manpower required to get crops in and out, cost less money, and the third thing that the people were interested in was um, how much it was going to cost. And if you just buy it out of the blue, you know, just buy it as a complete package, it's going to be a very expensive to get into. But I think a lot of farmers have been slowly buying into the GPS high technology and they already have a lot of the products and the components that they need to get into robotic farming. Uh, for 10 or 15 years, we've been seeing increased numbers of yield monitors and road guidance systems and GPS and auto steer. And now a lot of tractors come from the factory fully equipped with the hydraulics and the electronics and the software and the hardware to do most of what robotic farming would require. You have to buy a little bit more. You've got to have more RTK, you got to have uh, more precise uh, satellite systems. But a lot of the money is already out there. I don't think a lot of people have to spend a lot of extra money to step up for robotic farming whenever it happens. Two things probably are keeping robotic farming from really taking off, at least in uh, row crop farming, are concerns about how the robots are going to figure out where there's a rock in the field or there's a mud hole or a tile blowout and how they will deal with avoiding obstacles. The other thing is, I think there's a lot of concern about the legal liabilities. What's going to happen if the robot tractor takes off and runs through the neighbor's machine shed or through your wife's garden? Once you get those things figured out, I think we're going to see that uh, robotic tractors and that sort of high technology is going to be an evolutionary step rather than a revolutionary step. I think we're already halfway there. It's just going to take some fine tuning to get it so it's something common in everybody's field. And I don't know if it'll ever be common for everybody, but I think there is going to be a certain segment of farming that's going to move that way and get along real well with it. High technology, GPS, yield monitors, auto steer, that's another thing we're going to see changes in in 2012. Uh, a lot of people have been getting into that technology, getting along real well with it. There's a certain amount of people, though, who have run older equipment, who are a little bit adverse to technology and they haven't quite made the switch to yield monitors and GPS. I think we're going to see a lot more people getting into that technology in the coming year simply because the high corn prices, high bean prices, high commodity prices in the past year or two have allowed a lot of people to trade equipment. There's a lot of equipment on the market now that has built in uh, GPS and auto steer and, and road guidance technology. So guys that are having money and opportunity to trade up are going to find themselves with equipment that already has GPS and, and high technology built in and they might as well use it while it's there. It'll cost some money to get satellite subscriptions. It'll take some effort to get used to the technology and learn how to program and calibrate and to do all the, the computerized stuff that's, uh, that's necessary to make all those systems work. But I think we're going to see a large part of the farming industry that wasn't using that technology it's going to become available simply because there's more of it available on the used equipment market. Technology is another thing that's going to continue to add to a trend that I've seen in farming over the past 15 or 20 years, and that's the idea that farmers aren't as able to work on their equipment as they once were. There used to be farmers who would split their own tractors, rebuild their own clutches, overhaul their own engines. I think those days are slowly fading. Uh, the tractors and the equipment is getting so big, so complex, it requires special tools, uh, special technology, special training to work on, that 
I think it's going to be harder for farmers to do a lot of their own major repairs. You know, we'll always be able to do the oil changes and the you know the basic nuts and bolts stuff. And there's quite a few farmers who are pretty much engineering geniuses in their own right, and they're going to get along well because that's what they specialize in. But I think a lot of farmers are finding that it's more economical and probably necessary that you're going to turn over some of the, the large maintenance and the large repair to uh, dealerships or people who have the technology, the tools, the training, and the expertise to work on this big equipment. That's a little hard for some farmers to accept because you know that means the bills of the repair shops are going to be larger and larger, but it seems to be one of the costs associated with having such high technology, uh, super duper transmissions, and high horsepower tractors, and just getting to be such a specialized field that if you don't have the right equipment or the training, it's really difficult to do. I'm a full-time de uh, dealership mechanic in my daytime job, and I don't work on my wife's car anymore. I just change the oil and maybe air up the tires, and if I have anything else to do, I send it to a dealership. So I'm as frustrated as sometimes as everybody else. Those are a couple things that I see coming in the future in 2012. Uh, in another year, we'll know whether I'm right.